which don't tell have made in the last 12 to 15 months, especially coming from that, where you were, the fear and anxiety of, yeah. of the unknown. So are, would you be willing to talk about that, where you were then and where you are now? Yeah, totally. So I think everything can be broken down. And I was just sort of journaling or jotting down here to remind myself. I mean, really, everything fell into really three phases psychology so why are we doing this and that's the first answer to your question and then focus and then prioritize and execute those are like three phases that are span the last 15 months and then take us now to to today but with the first phase and the answer to your question it was a long road up front for me my wife was really comfortable with risk really comfortable with investing it took me a longer time to get on board with you know what what are we trying to achieve with this and why are we doing this why is this going to be a helpful way forward i had just been raised with a really unhealthy psychology towards money didn't come mm -hmm. from a tremendous amount of money so there was this this fear this very much immigrant mindset of like stuff your cat stuff your cash under your mattress <laughs> and hoard your acorns in case a rainy day or winter day comes and it took a really long time to unwind that so the first um there were really two key realizations that broke through for that number one was actually looking into nature i really love mountains and i really love the ocean and realizing that you know the most healthy ecosystems in the most beautiful places are very diverse so mm -hmm. there's a diversity of of organisms a diversity of nutrients sort of multiple layers that stack if you will that exist in sort of the natural order of things that are a great and i know we always talk about like diversification diversification and in investing but it didn't really fully occur to me until i saw some really great examples in nature and then the second sort of key thing was actually uh not to be overly cheesy but a call with jennifer uh and that mm -hmm. was i have to give huge shout out to uh a, a former colleague and a friend of mine corey Dieter, who's a member of the group with jennifer and she's like you got to talk to this woman, Jennifer Beatles, and you got to talk to her and her and her husband and learn about their journey. And that actual conversation, I remember to this day, I was walking around our neighborhood in San Mateo, California at the time, <laughs> talking to Jennifer on the phone. And that that tipped me over the edge to just, you know, at least move into the shape and bet what we're going to do and then focus on just taking action and moving out of the just psychological analysis and fear and trying to inoculate myself against that fear by taking action right because we can become paralyzed right if we 100%. if we don't if we stuck in i like to say analysis paralysis right so that's awesome so so now i know you are i mean you and i just had a little bit of a preview conversation and you are i mean you went from zero doors to what do you have five doors seven doors eight doors uh yeah, so it's eight doors, five properties. Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah. And and no mortgage. Uh, well, yeah, we have liabilities on the balance sheet, but we are not uh, we're not paying all of them. So housing, we we've we've obviated housing from our from our spending um, every month, which is which is awesome. So we've surpassed rent mortgage neutrality, and we actually now have that turned into. Uh, you know, a profit center for us. Like, you know, as we were talking about that now frees up that time and that capital to either invest in personal business or in philanthropy or social issues. Like that's just now extra gravy each month that um, we just have the freedom to decide what to do with. And we, we sort of choose to do that in line with an overall sort of strategy and philosophy we've put together moving forward. Right. And this re this most recent purchase of yours, you are house hacking. And, Correct. and you just told me some exciting stuff that is totally new from the last couple of weeks as well about um, the tiny house in the back proposition. And I'll let you talk about the, to me, the most exciting news. Yeah. So I, I, I because of this and, and this was the ultimate goal was, you know, I just left my W-2 job on Monday 
and am back in the founder seat for my second software company that'll be run out of our um, now home that will be house hacking uh, here in, in Jackson Hole, Wyoming, which is which I still have to pinch myself every morning that we're actually doing that this is this is reality. Um, and it, we just kind of went through such a long period of execution that I don't it wasn't even until you reached out and we talked that it was like, oh, yeah, I guess we we did kind of get after it for the last 15 <laughs> months and, and and things are now really, really wonderful. We just got so focused that it's it's hard sometimes to see um yeah just just kind of when the milestones are, are reached but yeah I'm now back in the founder seat and um and things are really good it's, congratulations it's, it's that wonderful. is so that is so exciting i mean now you control your time you control what you do with your time which is where we all all want to be right that's awesome totally yeah. totally so can you tell me uh if you were to come across somebody like yourself um, and, and they had the fear and they had the anxiety, how important is it to you to have that support of, of working alongside of like-minded people and being in a support group, having the deals funneled your way and being able to run ideas by people? It's imperative. So mm -hmm. there's good reasons for that and not the least of which is like our fundamental human desire to be accepted by our tribe. Mm -hmm. So whatever tribe we subscribe to, whether that's a tribe of fear, the other people that say, Hey, you know, grandma, grandpa, mom, dad always said, you know, save your money, save your money, whether it's that mm -hmm. tribe or whether it's a tribe of folks that are looking to put their money to work and maybe change what they prioritize and are willing to change behavior to do that. It's, it's like, it's like losing weight, learning a new language, you know, learning any new skill that was, that was huge to have the support of my wife and then a community of folks to be able to ask questions to, because ultimately your brain is designed to keep you alive. It's designed and, to, and to grow, to, to survive, right? It's not, it's not designed to help you achieve it's it's not necessarily going to help you look at the trade off of your bills every month and then you know figure out how to your brain can't distinguish between saber tooth tiger and like your boss yelling at you it it's exactly the same chemically and so for us it was really important to not only have that community but a, try to reduce the unknown because that's where the the fear was the fear was i don't understand this it costs money Mm. therefore there's a risk of this money going away now kick in monkey brain survival and now we're <laughs> afraid and we don't understand and we're always going to be afraid of what we don't understand right and so the first phase was just this like i read rich dad poor dad i talked to jennifer and one day i just distinctly remember like a switch went off in my head and it was just i don't want time to continue to be spent in this current way anymore. Nice. And once that switch flipped, it was like, okay, let's get after it. Let's wake up early. Let's read. Let's listen to podcasts. Let's get involved in the community. Let's start paying attention to deals that come through in the newsletter. Let's now start running little experiments to take this fear and this unknown and turn these emotional problems into math problems. And huh. let's take the fear and start trying to you know vaccinate yourself against what is causing that fear and there are so many ways to do that prior to closing a deal <laughs> i had no idea right. and there are so many little steps that you can start doing that cost you nothing other than the time and energy required to analyze it and learn from it but every step i remember the first deal was so powerful because just making an offer, then going from offer to offer acceptance, then going or, you know, bidding with people, like all every little step. Um, and again, credit to people like Corey and Jennifer, who kind of were just encouraging mm -hmm. of what questions to ask and what to learn from each step so that it didn't, that fear slowly started to go away because it started to move from an unknown to a known. And then this emotional fear-based loss aversion to just a math problem where it's like, oh, okay, if we it hit makes these, 
if we hit these variables, we're going to be fine. And you can mathematically prove that to yourself. And that was, that was really, really powerful. And that was the entirety of the, the first phase. And the hardest one was the first one. And <laughs> it's, you know, I'm sure that's the case for everybody, but definitely, definitely for my mind and just being a more anxious person prior to, to going into it. Sure. How did you feel about investing out of state? Was, was some of your fear and anxiety wrapped around the idea of not seeing the property or not having, um, oh no, no, okay. that's good. not at all. Not at all. I mean, I, I, I've been working remotely for a few years. I manage, you know, healthcare, I manage family problems. It's just very comfortable <laughs> to be in a world of, you know, FaceTime, you need to be more explicit. You need to take on more of an onus and responsibility right. for communication and focus and, and, reprioritizing and prioritizing what people should focus on. And um, now we haven't done any renovations out of state. Sure. I will say going through that now locally, I'm, I am scared of doing that out of state, but that's a, that's a problem for that will sort of take what we learn here and apply moving forward. But right. It, the right. fear was just entirely not understanding the nature of the bet we were taking. Gotcha. And okay just de-risking through education and talking to people that had done it um, both successfully and unsuccessfully and just right. starting to form a framework for ourselves and being a super nerd what I ultimately came up with was <laughs> what I called like a prospectus I literally had a one-page document that I would I send. I saw that I think did you put that in the community forum? I did yeah I, yep, yeah so I it, saw it that. Had like you know a, like a strategy goals yep. what are we looking to like what are the parameters for search what are similar properties that have us excited and that was a really helpful artifact for always helping to pull people back and like when we were shaping and building our local team in each market we end up investing in that was really helpful to just be a north star to always pull people back to and then filter out all the noise and keep us focused sure. on you know what's going to work what's going to work for us and what's not necessarily going to be great for like a private equity firm coming in and looking to buy a thousand of these, you know, right. it's just different, different types of math, different type of, of strategy. Right. So that is something that's really neat about our um, inner circle membership and the community forum is that you get to share those things like your prospectus in there. And we, we are very thankful that you get in there and, and help other people when they ask questions too. And I'm sure that you've, also uh, received some help and some feedback from other people within the community forum. Um, definitely, definitely. And we don't know, every, like we're, we, we don't know everything at all. You know, we have not sure. mastered this, you know, and I think that's, that's something, you know, there's a hesitancy. I'm not as probably involved in the forum. Like we talked about, you know, prior is like, I, there's almost still a hesitancy there. Like I'm not, I'm not looking to start a TikTok channel and start self-promoting as a real estate mogul. That's just, we, we shaped some bets that made sense for us and the math that we were comfortable with and, and that worked. And so speaking to that, I can do, but I still right. feel a super long way from, from being in the position of like other folks in the community that are just super, super helpful, but have definitely, you know, they've got 10, 15 plus years and dozens of, there's just so much more experience and knowledge there it just would feel totally foolhardy to be like, yes, Chantal and I have mastered this. Now let's, you know, build a following around, around like right. a couple well, of deals, you know. You guys are so similar to so many people though, right? That come in with the fear and the anxiety and they're looking for or somebody to say, you can do this. Here's how to run the numbers. We can help you. We can help you with the deal flow. We can help you with the support. We can help you with the deal analysis. And so I think, to that, it, it is important to know that so many people are right where you guys are, or even behind you guys, right? So you do, you do definitely have um, some value to add, and we do appreciate that when you do share in the community forum. So tell tell me from 15 months ago to now, run me through where you are, what you've done. Yeah. So. I think the, the first the first thing was like defining what we're trying to achieve. So, mm -hmm. you know, ultimately the ultimate impetus was just getting personal for one second. You know, my dad has a rare neurodegenerative disease 
And he and my mom had always been really afraid of investing. Our family psychology was very fear-based when it came to money and investing. And so there was always this notion of, hey, we're going to we're going to take all these things and not do them now. Uh, and we're going to put that off to retirement. <laughs> and then all my time is going to be spent on chasing a salary. Right. And now I'm really respect. I, I'm super grateful for, for that gave us education that gave us shelter that created an environment in which we were able to explore opportunities and to grow. Um, but now seeing what has happened where that retirement's never going to happen because mm -hmm. it's just not possible now uh that had a profound effect on how Chantal my wife and I wanted to prioritize our our behaviors and and our money so we had been saving for quite some time I was really blessed and fortunate I had started and sold my first software company I had worked at Apple for four years post acquisition so there was a there was definitely a uh, a nest egg that we were looking to put to work and we just kind of subscribed to this very rigorous like personal finance self education and so many roads kept leading to real estate real estate real huh. estate and i never understood why and so when we you know fast forwarding a little bit to deciding that was something we were going to do and deciding that was a vehicle we wanted to to invest in for sure we um reached out to people we knew like so many others read you know rich dad poor dad yeah. that just totally switched my whole psychology towards money and then met Corey Dieter at work who is just awesome and super yes. encouraging and supportive and willing to talk openly about numbers and fears and her path and just like how to do pro formas and what percentage like what estimates make sense and just really walk through things in such a detailed way that then led to like okay we're comfortable we're going to do this now here's an amount of money we're comfortable putting at risk here for a first deal so let's now shape a let's not go all in on deal 1 let's right. shape a bet with an amount of money that's going to be sensible for us so that we can learn as we go and it's not going to be outrageous if it goes totally south and the deal is terrible um and then so we and got that deal, and that first deal came from the deal list correct first right? deal came talk yeah. to jennifer join the group the first deal was a duplex in kansas city in independence missouri that came through the deal list and we ended up having such a good experience with the folks there that we did a another off-market duplex with them then we did a single family rental in fayetteville north carolina and then this year moving into first quarter of 2021 we did our first primary residence, which was a home here in Jackson, Wyoming, which we are currently renovating into a duplex. So we're going to house hack and there's an opportunity to do the, the tiny home in the backyard. And um, actually, the, this residence that I'm in now, while our home's being renovated, this is going to be a short term rental. So Exciting. two duplexes, the single family rental the duplex house hack here in Jackson and the short-term rental here in, in Jackson as well. And that, that'll be then the, the theme for 2021 is let the portfolio run. That's going to be <laughs> sort of the 2021 nice. thesis. Nice. Yeah. So, so you can spend some time on your new business venture. I Correct. love that you're diversified, that you guys have done multifamily house hacking and you're kind of venturing into short-term rental maybe, and maybe a little bit more with the, with the tiny house. So it's really exciting. I'm so, I'm so happy that things have gone the way they've gone for you. Clearly you guys have defined your path and stay yeah. focused and um, stay, stay plugged into what you really want to do. So I, I really appreciate everything um, that you're willing to share and, um, I, I just, I couldn't say anything more as far as how, how appreciative we are that you're taking your time to do the Facebook Live and and um, give other people inspiration because we know that many more people are in the same boat that you were in 15 months ago. And look how fast you have kind of turned that boat around. Well, yeah, I mean, it was, 
you know, super appreciative to the community for sure. And, and to Jennifer and Corey in, in particular, and there have been folks that have chimed, chimed in along the way. And I know there are folks that I haven't always gotten back to in the forum. So I apologize to them here for that. Um, just being in, in focus on execution, but I think it, it doesn't feel scary anymore. Now it just feels uh -huh. like a math pro it, it, now it's exciting. Now it's fun yeah. because you understand what's happening. Now I think things are really different now than they were a year ago, but, um, you know, that's maybe beyond my expertise to comment on, but for it, I think the, the question I always ask myself is like, what would I, what would I, what would I tell myself? Like, what would I, what would I go back and sort of like, what's that mm -hmm. conversation I would have had with myself getting started? And I think it would just be to shape, think of it as poker, think of it as a hand of poker, not chess. So don't think of it as there's like some master strategy with a predetermined uh -huh. path of fixed moves to make that lead to some sort of deterministic outcome. Like if I move, you know, from a2 to d4 then this will happen and then like and try and there's some of that anticipating what other people are going to do like in an offer or in in, in negotiating for a renovation or something like that but thinking of it in terms of poker which is hey what is what is the nature of the bet here what is the right. bet that we're making do we understand the fundamentals of that bet what are the inputs that we're using to say that we understand that? And how confident are we that those inputs are correct? And so that moves it from this emotional problem to a math problem. And that moves it from something that is driven by loss aversion or on the flip side, like greed, for example, which would be the sort of like polar opposite of that. Um, how do you just change it into, okay, if our goal here is to win and winning is defined as have control over our time, be able to leave W2 employment and go start our own business and take bets that way. If the goal is to get to that position, then what is required to get there? What's our current burn rate? What are we currently spending our money on? And then now what numbers need to be true to supplant that? And then what what bets make sense to achieve that goal. And therefore with that, you can come up with like the prospectus and start to form strategy and a goal that a team you can assemble around to then go and find an asset that's going to help achieve that goal. And, you know, in the first property that, that was not an outrageous sum of money. It's not a hundred million dollar massive commercial venture. You know, it's a, it's relatively small, amounts of capital. Um, and for us that, that worked and that made sense. And I would just, and we've just continued to focus on that and it makes it not only way easier to think about, but now it's, now it's fun. Now it's like a puzzle and <laughs> yeah. that, that becomes more of like a creative process as opposed to a fear driven process, which is, which is far more enjoyable. You're right. I was going to say that that's, that's a lot easier to deal with than the, than the fear. Hey, I, um, I like what you said about all of those pieces being put together and it not being a chess game. That was really interesting, <clears throat> uh, very well put. And I like to think that within the inner circle, we've created all of that to kind of help mm -hmm. somebody move um, out of that fear mode into the exciting creation mode. And I like to say Jennifer named addicted to ROI the perfect name because it does kind of get addicting <laughs> once, once you start the ball rolling. <laughs> yes, so. it does. All right, Matt. Well, thank you so much again, and congratulations. I'm so excited to hear that you quit your W-2 job. Oh, That's thanks. I, it's so funny that I think I think Jennifer said this in maybe one of the, like, webinars or masterminds or something, but, like, this is this is one of the few – I think this is the only community, actually, that I that were a part of that, like, genuinely celebrates that as a, as a massive milestone, um, and for good reason. I mean, it feels it – feels, like the the confidence and peace of mind that comes from it is just mm, it's amazing i know it. yeah I, it's empowering yeah. right yeah it's super empowering yes it's super empowering so yeah. it feels feels really good all right well keep us uh up to date on your little house hack project and and let me know what you end up doing with the little tiny house in the back 
<laughs> yeah, I will. We're I'm putting, you know, me being a nerd, I'm putting like a, there'll, there'll be like a keynote and like a before and after. There's gonna be like a awesome. summary that goes along with it. So way cool. Um, yeah, looking forward to sharing that when it's all done. All right, great. You take care, Matt. Thank you again very much.